Hey, how's it going? Uh, thirst trap dissensor. No, I'm kidding. I, I don't know what I was trying to do for this uh, video. I thought I'd wear a tank top this time or not tank top or what, whatever this stuff is. Okay. You know, I thought I'd wear this, um, to talk about the version 2.5 special live stream. Maybe I'm trying to attack Fei Zhao here, you know, but general come here, come here, please. No, but seriously guys, uh, the version 2.5 special live stream was really good. In my personal opinion, it was really, really good. A very, very good live stream. And we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about all the stuff that came from that special live stream. But before we get into that, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button down below and hit that notification bell to be notified of when the next Honkai Star Rail video comes out. And of course, leave a comment about what you're most excited about when it comes to this whole, you know, 2.5 stuff, right? I just hurt myself. Ow. Pulling a freaking uh, injury here. But yes, let's go ahead and let's talk about the version 2.5 special live stream. Now, what I found really cool about this, right, was that there was a, the, the trailer was excellent, right? Let's start off with that. That trailer got me so hyped. And the fact that we're gonna be seeing like, you know, Luca join in on, you know, this whole festival thing. And the reason why Luca is kind of important is because he's a fighter, obviously, and he wants to go out and explore the cosmos and fight more, right? Which I think is cool. I think that honestly, that is a great move to introduce Bella Bogian characters onto the uh, ZN show. So kudos for finding a way to bring them in. And I think that's a wonderful like type of uh, introduction, I guess in, in this case. So I thought that was really cool. But overall, the trailer was Bob. We got to see Fei Zhao in all of her might and glory. Uh, I'm trying to make sure I didn't cut myself too bad. Yeah, but um, yeah. She was freaking awesome in this trailer. There's a, the, the story is going to advance in this little side story. And what I want to talk about with that is I know a lot of people were originally like, oh my God, we've got filler. We got to deal with filler. But I think the difference with Honkai Star Wars filler is that it does have an overarching story to what is going on. Um, or maybe not an overarching story to the already overarching story, but more so like an underarching story that's kind of the layers between, you know, kind of like what they do in their actual like tree thing where they show like, oh, this is what happens in this. So that's at least how I view it, right? I think it look. I think it's great. I think honestly that it's fantastic that they do stuff like this. And this storyline, like at first was kind of like, oh, slow burner. Oh, this is gross. But the more that we got into it, you know, with the, you know, big bad wolfy boy, you know, and what happened with uh, Zhui Yi, it, it's getting crazy. And when we go to the next part of the story, it's going to get even crazier. Uh, I saw Jing Liu was in the trailer at some point. I got to rewatch the trailer, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I think that honestly, the trailer was a banger. Let's go ahead and talk about the characters, right? So first character that is going to be in phase one is Bei Zhao. Now, I... Am a simp for Foxy and women, right? I love me some Ting Yun. Oh yes, I I I got this. I I actually won this, right? I uh, won this at the last convention I was at, uh, uh, in Phoenix or Anime Impulse in Phoenix. Uh, I won that, and I was super happy about that because it's really really nice. Um, but yes, I love me some Foxy and women. I, call me a normie if you want. I don't care. The Foxy and girls are hot. You know, freaking Ting Yun, Yu Kong, Bei Zhao, uh, Zhao Zhao, wait, <laughs> Yai Miko. But yeah, let's go ahead and talk about, uh, let's talk about Fei Zhao for a second. Uh, skill deals wind damage to a single enemy and launches a follow-up attack at the same target right after. What's really cool also is that, like, she has, like, this different type of follow-up attack from what I was seeing. Like, there's two different ones that you could get. Um, but it also really goes into the ultimate where if they've got shield still or uh, like, you know, yeah, shield, let's just call it shield. If they have shield, you use your ax, but if they don't have shield, you use uh, your sword, which is pretty cool. Uh, consume six points of flying auras to activate, deals wind damage to a single enemy. Uh, the ultimate has two modes and one you do more damage with, with the toughness bar is present and the other is when it's depleted. Each mode uses a different weapon. Now, don't mind me. I'm a little tired. You know, this old man's got to go to bed here soon, right? 
But of course, at uh, the Talit also gains one point of Flying Auras. Uh, every certain number of attacks done by allies, and she can activate her ultimate once eight points or six points have reached. Max 12 stacks can be stored. Uh, after Fei Zhao's teammates attack an enemy target, uh, Fei Zhao immediately launches a follow-up attack against the primary target, dealing wind damage and increases the damage dealt to the enemy. Technique, after using the technique, uh, enters a special state. While in the state, or while in the stage, pulls in enemies within a certain range and increases the unit's movement speed after anti-battle gains some points of flying auras. Now, what's really cool about this is that when you're in the overworld, you're basically pulling in all the enemies and you're just like a tornado. That's basically what you are as Fei Zhao. And I think that's a wonderful thing. She's really, really cool in that regard. Very different in that sense. So I dig that. Not only that, but she has the same type of thing going on as Akron. And I think that we need more characters like that personally, because I like that style, especially if you go into the States like Akron and Fei Zhao do. The animations on Fei Zhao are absolutely insane. I don't know what's going on with HSR's uh, graphics budget or animation budget, but uh, keep that up, guys, especially when we go into the Fate collab. Now, of course, we also got Lingxia, who is basically going to replace Gallagher, right? We got a fire abundance character. Now, deals fire damage to all enemies and restores HP for all allies as the skill inflicts B-Fog or befog on all enemies while in befog targets receive increased break damage and that's exactly why gallagher is getting replaced man it's crazy uh recipes gallagher right uh, dead in two different uh ways now <laughs> spoiler alert uh then deals fire damage to all enemies and restores hp for all allies she's insane uh i was originally on the fence of summoning for her because she's hot but i'm trying to also not spend as much money but uh i don't get the choice anymore i am going to summon for her <laughs> Uh, and then her uh, talent is when using skills summons Fu Yan, who lasts for a certain number of actions. If he's already summoned, increases the number of his actions instead. When taking action, Fu Yan launches follow up attacks, dealing fire damage to all enemies, uh, then dispels one debuff from all allies and restores HP. That's insane for a talent, in my, in my personal opinion. You're not only getting the heals, you're doing fire damage, and you're also dispelling a debuff. Uh, she's probably gonna be the best healer in the game, at least in my opinion, right? Um, and then, of course, Technique. After using Technique, immediately summons Fu Yan at the start of the next battle, inflicts Befog on all enemies. And then, of course, we got Moza, who is going to come in phase one with Fei Zhao, right? So, Moza is just going to be, you know, the hunt uh, lightning. But to me, he's he's the embodiment of the four star, right? I don't think he's going to be that great from what I've been seeing. Uh, his skill marks a designated single target enemy as the prey and deals lightning damage to it, uh, gains nine points of charge. On the ultimate, deals lightning damage to an enemy target and launches a follow-up attack against the target. Uh, talent, uh, Moza will enter the departed state with the prey exists on the field. After allies attack the prey, Moza additionally deals lightning damage and consumes one charge. Uh, technique, after using his technique, Moza gains stealth. While stealth is active, Moza cannot be detected by enemies. Increases the damage Moza deals when he enters combat by attacking enemies while in stealth mode. So he's going to be that four star single target DPS that I don't think anybody was really asking for. But hey, we'll take him, right? He's got the same voice actor as Kave for English. So cheers to that. By the way, speaking of cheers, before we continue, make sure to use code TYSTRA for 10% off at gamersubs.gg. We just launched the day and night, you know, the whole collaboration thing that we're doing. Well, not collaboration, but it's the new waifu cup, right? Comes with like a sh uh, shirt. Uh, we got a, you know, bomber jacket, which is freaking insane. Towel. Uh, we got shorts, all that cool stuff. Plus the waifu cup looks absolutely insane. Today, I'm obviously using the uh, trash taste waifu cup. Love this one. Mm. We're just drinking water right now because it's close to my bedtime. Um, but yeah, make sure you use code ties for 10% off. Let's go ahead and dive into the surprising thing. So phase one is going to be phase out, right? But we're getting three rerun banners, right? We're getting Kafka, Black Swan, and Robin. Now, what's really cool about this is that whatever you use to summon on these banners, right, goes across all of them. So if you decide like you're going to summon for Fei Zhao and you're like, oh, well, I don't know if I really want Fei Zhao and you want to switch to Robin, you could switch to Robin. Um, that being said, all the light codes are there too. Uh, four star characters are going to be Moza, Asta and Luca, which Luca makes sense because of the fact that, you know, he's going to be taking part in the actual event. Now, 
This is cool, but also kind of sad for new players. It's cool for veteran players because if you missed a character, you could go back and get them, whatever. But for new players, it's tough because you got Kafka and Black Swan being two great Nihility units. Uh, Black Swan basically being uh, second or the second helper to, you know, Akron. Kafka being a great helper as well. Robin, who's like the best support in the game. And then you got Fei Zhao, who's going to be the best single target DPS in the game uh, from what it looks like, right? And then the four stars are good. We got Moza, who's new. Asta has been there since the game started the game. You get her for free. Uh, constellations are good. And then you got Luca there, right? The crazy thing about Moza, though, is Moza's on phase one, but his light cone is on phase two, which phase two is Linksha with Topaz getting another rerun. I'm actually kind of surprised at that, to be quite honest with you. It didn't seem too long ago that Topaz got reran. So to me, that's a little bit of a bummer drummer, right? But we are getting Misha, Natasha, and Gwenyphon on this banner. I only really think I need Misha, but even then, I don't remember if I got Misha to full constellations, right? Now, again, these banners are good. Overall, Fei Zhao and Lingxia are both going to be solid units to have on your team. We got a couple events going on. Uh, Luminary War Dance Ceremony, where you're going to be training Luca to be the very best like no one ever was. You got the Festive Revelry, which is going to be a lot of different puzzles that are happening in this game. Oh, by the way, the Luminary War Dance, you get a pet piggy boy that goes around with you. You get the rest of the Eidolons for March 7th, and it looks like you get a phone background, so that's cool. Uh, Divergent Universe also is getting a massive, massive update. Uh, we're getting new planner... Uh... What, why am I losing planner set? They're right there. I'm being dumb right now. We're getting new planner sets that are happening for this as well. Uh, but Divergent Universe is getting 20 plus levels. They're getting new curios, new blessings, new everything basically. And on top of that, in the main room, you can actually go to the side and play some of the adventure games without any repercussions, which is pretty fantastic. I think that's a wonderful addition to Divergent Universe. I've been playing a lot of it recently just to kind of try and 100% everything. I'm not even close. I'm a nine, well, I am close. But the occurrences are kicking my butt. I need like five curios. Yeah, five curios and like seven occurrences. And I can't figure out which ones I'm missing outside of like two Ron Mays. It's freaking insane. So, but we are getting all that plus the two planner ornaments, which is pretty sick. Um, the Lushaka, the Sunken Seas, and the Wondrous Banan Amusement Park ornaments. So, pretty dope. Now, Here's where I was very surprised. Not only are we getting Gift of Odyssey, right? But we're also getting the Gift of Comet, uh, which was very strange to me because like, it just came out of the blue and I'm not I'm not upset about it. I'm actually really, really happy about it. 1,000 uh, Stellar Jades, uh, 10 of the Stamina Potions, and 150 of the uh, little things that you could use for traces instead of the actual uh, um, materials. So I think that's really, really cool. I I just didn't think it was gonna happen. Like I, I, I'm definitely happy about it, but it, you know, again, I'm very, I'm very excited for it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I'm very excited for it, but I wasn't, I wasn't thinking that they needed to, but again, with HSR, I feel like a lot of people uh, look at HSR and they're like, oh, well they need to do stuff like this. They don't really like, the game is great. And a lot of people are saying also that HSR is dead. I beg to differ, we're on, 2.5 going into 2.6 and it seems like a lot of good stuff is coming uh for the rest of these updates right so that that way when we go next year we go into the new stuff which i can't remember if like what quarter of 2025 that the uh collab is going to be happening but i don't know i was kind of shocked though because they did not actually talk about the collab in this live stream i thought they would like leave another nugget you know like they've been doing so i don't know but another thing too that they talked about we're getting a new weekly boss and it is going to be the lovely phase Zhao. and that boss looks sick i gotta tell y'all i gotta tell y'all i was super happy seeing phase Zhao as a new weekly boss like i don't know what it is but like when we got arlecchino and we got arlecchino as a weekly boss in genshin i was like sent through the fucking roof dude excuse my language um, but now that we're getting phased out in a phased out weekly boss, I'm being sent through the freaking roof. It is what it is, man. 
I'm super stoked. And then we're also getting a casual mode uh, for the weekly boss stuff and I think some other uh, stuff as well. In case you're like, oh, well, I don't really want to go through and fight the challenge, which to me works so long as you keep the same rewards, I guess. A lot of people might disagree with me on that and they're like, well, if you're going casual, you should get less rewards. I don't know, man. This game is supposed to be casual. You're supposed to have fun with it, right? Uh, I don't look at gacha games as needing to be meta driven all the time. So if they bring a casual to like make it so that you could build your characters at the same speed and then later on you can like get achievements and like extra seller dates for, you know, doing the harder mode. Hell yeah. But I think that when it comes to building your characters, you don't need to uh, put it to where nobody can get those rewards right away. Right. So, but that's really all I got for this. I think that this update is going to be a banger right and a lot of people are probably gonna sit there and say no it's not it's terrible side stories filler art nobody cares a lot of people do i do i think this is actually going into more of the ziencho stuff i think we're gonna get a lot more ziencho stuff and a lot of people are gonna be peeved about that but let's be real when we go to the next planet we're probably gonna go back and do a lot more pentaconi stuff right that's what i think is going on because we got a lot of bellabog right we got a lot of bellabog in the first set and then we also got obviously the zian show but we didn't get as much of the zian show as we did bellabog in my personal opinion that's just me so then we went to pentaconi and now we're getting more of the zian show and now when we go to the next planet we're probably going to get more pentaconi i kind of see this as a possible pattern i could be absolutely wrong though right but let me know in the comments down below what you think. Are you excited for 2.5 like me? Or are you a deter like a deter? Are you saying don't? You know, I don't want this. I don't know. To me, I think it's great. So let me know in the comments down below. Like, comment, subscribe. Thank you so much. And we will see you in the next video. Please take care and be safe, y'all.